I'm Murtaza Vali. I'm the curator of a series of exhibitions at Warehouse 421 called Substructures, Excavating the Urban Everyday, which examine uh, the infrastructural networks that uh, shape and give texture to uh, daily life in cities in the UAE and across the Gulf. The current exhibition is uh, called Total Landscaping, is the third in four, and examines the ways in which nature is experienced within Gulf cities as artifice, as a scene, as a prop, uh, as a screen, rather than as a form of life. So it investigates the ways in which nature as a form of life is arrested, its vitality is arrested, by the forces of uh, politics, power, and capitalism. This is a work entitled Padma from a series called Efflorescence by uh, the artist duo Iftikar Dadi and Elizabeth Dadi. Uh, the series is a, a, a set of large neon sculptures that are uh, representations of flowers that come, that belong to con contested regions and contested borders. On one hand, the work um, kind of reinforces the fact that nature transcends national boundaries. On the other hand, it also uh, reminds us that uh, the, the realm of sign or symbol, the symbolic, is actually a, an important space uh, through which national identity is both constructed and reinforced. Iftikhar Dadi and Elizabeth Dadi uh, have long worked with popular culture and the visual culture of South Asian cities. And uh, neon uh, signage has been both an important uh, reference and an important medium for them. These are uh, a set of four photographs by the Abu Dhabi-based photographer Farah Al-Qasmi. And uh, Farah Al-Qasmi's work is characterized by sort of like a reveling within uh, pattern in very, very rich ornamental Baroque pattern and also color. And um, a fair number of these patterns tend to be uh, floral or vegetal. And so I wanted to kind of highlight this because they document instances where nature is encountered as artifice. So this particular work, uh, which is called M Napping on Carpet, um, you see an abundance of flora, but it is entirely flora reduced to pattern. So it's there in the um, arabesque patterns on the carpet underneath. It's there in the floral patterns on the, uh, the woman's gown. And it's also the, the kind of like rainbow of colors that we associate with flowers. Uh, is also reflected in her high-heeled shoes. And in some sense, it's a vision of nature taking over the human world, but it is a nature that is entirely artificial. This triptych of works looks at the way in which flowers are transformed materially um, into uh, substances that are not them naturally in some sense. Um, so, you know, the work from left to right, uh, the one from the left is a rose carved out of tomatoes. The one in the middle is a flower made out of crystal uh, that is used to house a, a bottle of perfume. And the final one on the right is a uh, flower uh, piped out of icing. And in, in these three, we see the ways in which flowers are transformed into objects, into objects that are used to ornament or decorate, and also specifically objects that are meant to be consumed. Um, you know, so the sort of things that uh, uh, embellish foodstuffs or that embellish uh, a cosmetic uh, like uh, perfume. So this is a work entitled Dubai Gardens from 2017 by the Dubai-based uh, artist and photographer Hin Mizaina. And it is a collaboration with uh, uh, the architect and architectural historian Todd Rees, who's uh, provided the text that accompanies the images. The images are, are a set of cyanotypes that Mezena made uh, of plants, primarily leaves, um, blades of grass, that she uh, found at different public and private gardens across the city of Dubai. So in some sense, the, the, the installation as a whole is a botanical portrait of the city, of, uh, of Dubai or of any other Gulf city. Um, and the technique she's used, it's called a, a cyanotype. It has this very characteristic deep blue. 
is a very early form of uh, photography. Uh, it actually dates back uh, almost to the invention of photography in the mid 19th century. And it's a form that is a, um, a direct printing process. So there's no negative. And what's done is the uh, plant specimen is placed directly on a, a paper that is photosensitive paper that is treated with a chemical and then exposed to the light uh, and then it's developed. And the area that is uh, covered, uh, that's blocked from light, appears white and everything else appears uh, blue. And uh, what is interesting about this particular technique is fairly early on, there was an important uh, photographer and botanist named Anna Atkins uh, who used cyanotypes as, uh, as a medium through which to document uh, plant life. And so this project in some sense is uh, acknowledging this important historical precedent. Reese's texts actually, they're these uh, short paragraph long vignettes that recount moments from the history of urban greening as an infrastructural project within Dubai. Each one tells a story from a different moment within Dubai's history, but it focuses on the ways in which um, green spaces were developed or they were uh, conceived of or they, you know, access was controlled or different ways in which residents of the city in its early decades uh, thought about fruits, about plants, about natural life. The images especially have a, this scientific botanical feel to them where the, the plant life of the city is being catalogued for some natural history. Uh, study, uh, but at, at the same time it's also a very, very intimate portrait and this comes through in Reese's text um, and in the images themselves as well because uh, there's an intimacy, the plant life of the city actually has to sit against the surface of the photosensitive paper to create the image and uh, the portrait, the, the images themselves require the city's uh, sunlight for them to be made. So in some sense, the, the, the images, the, 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 the artwork as a whole, the installation as a whole um, is literally produced by the sunlight of the Gulf, by the environment, by the atmosphere. This work by the Singapore-based artist Ho Rui An is in some sense the kind of inspiration or the origins of the exhibition. It is titled Screen Green and it consists of a documentation, a video that documents uh, a lecture performance that the artist did. Um, the artist the lecture performance is one of the artist's preferred mediums. And it's presented here on this uh, uh, flat screen against a, uh, a backdrop that is uh, basically mimicking the sorts of backdrops that you would see in a, in a photography studio. Um, and the backdrop features uh, this image of an incredibly lush, verdant, tropical landscape. Uh, and the, the, the video itself, the lecture performance, um, talks about uh, the ways in which um, nature is used as a backdrop for expressions of power within uh, Ho's native Singapore. Um, and the screen, the, 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 the screen green of the title both talks about the ways in which nature is used as a screen, as a backdrop against which uh, the National Day rally happens and the leader gives uh, that annual speech uh, to the citizens of the city-state. But it also then discusses the ways in which uh, digital technology uh, and specifically green screening technology, which is a way in which um, a background can be digitally imposed on um, uh, a piece of uh, a sequence of film. Um, it's a technique that is commonly used in post-production uh, with CGI and special effects especially where the, the live actor is uh, videotaped uh, acting against a 
an environment that is entirely this one particular shade of green and then that environment is filled in digitally. And um, so Ho's um, lecture starts off with footage of the Prime Minister of uh, Singapore uh, presenting at this National Day rally. And in that presentation, behind him are a series of images that are both of greenery, but they are also clearly a digital projection. And um, what's interesting about the video, uh, about the lecture performance is that Ho discusses the ways in which these two types of screens, which are both green screens in a way, the digital green screen and the use of nature as backdrop, uh, are kind of uh, intertwined within the narrative of Singapore and that they are used as a way of um, kind of promoting the city, marketing the city as this kind of uh, tropical landscape, but not a tropical landscape that is wild, a one that has been tamed and controlled uh, and civilized in some sense. But it, he also discusses the ways in which uh, this kind of imagination of the green or the projection of the green is also uh, used as a way of marshalling the imaginative or the participatory capacities of the nation's citizens. Um, so by creating a space in which the future can be projected, um, it in some sense limits the possibility of participation or imagination on the part of the uh, people of Singapore. This series of uh, 10 photographs by the Malaysian artist Yi Yi Lan, uh, titled YB1 through 10, look at uh, a culture that is quite common uh, to those of us who live in the global south. And that is the culture through which the uh, honorable guest, like the chief guest, um, a dignitary or an official is feted at uh, functions, at official functions. And what uh, Yi has done is she has taken photographs of uh, these kind of elaborate crossages that uh, are often given out to these chief guests at these functions. Um, she's photographed them in the pockets of uh, different type articles of clothing and the articles of clothing are very carefully chosen. Uh, within the Malaysian and the Southeast Asian context, they specifically reference uh, sort of post-colonial politicians. You have the safari suit or you have the batik shirt, so a kind of like nativist uh, politician or a nativist leader. And then you also have uh, a Western style suit that kind of uh, indexes the, the, the corporate businessman or uh, the, the more uh, um, neoliberal kind of uh, uh, expression of power. And uh, what you don't catch uh, immediately is the fact that each of the crossages is uh, wilting a little bit. It's drying up a little bit. So in some sense, it is both a document of this um, kind of official ritual, but it is also a critique of that ritual at the same time. There are a few other subtle clues that kind of index the uh, critique that's intended in this project. Uh, one is, of course, the genre, which evokes the a traditional genre of the vanitas, which is a still life painting that often showed uh, food or fruits or vegetables or plant life in decay as a way of kind of uh, indexing the passing of time and uh, um, symbolizing the mortality of all things, but especially of humans. Um, so the wilting flowers kind of indexes that and introduces a level of critique at that level. Um, also, the way the uh, photographs are framed, uh, these kind of uh, very rich uh, Baroque over the top golden frames, uh, again, kind of um, indexes these, the, the, the kind of like grandiosity associated with these uh, honorable men or chief guests. So the placement of the uh, frames, which are placed a little bit above eye level, um, is also another way in which the um, kind of chief guest is uh, referenced. Uh, it's often the slightly higher uh, 
level at which one encounters the uh, photographs of an official or a dignitary. The title of this work is YB 1 through 10, and the YB is an abbreviation of a, a word, Yang Ber Berhormat, which translates as the honorable. And, uh, you know, so that cues us into the subject of the work, which are uh, these uh, politicians or uh, honorable uh, chief guests. Um, and it's kind of looking at the ways in which uh, flowers, flora, plant, natural life is used a, as a way of kind of scaffolding their expressions of power or their performances of power or their theater of power.